Welcome back to another episode of Summit Life where we are again, in fact, in my shop in Park City, but today we are working on the 96 F-350 here. This thing used to be an old farm truck in Colorado, but it is slowly becoming my show truck and my tow truck. Uh, but today we're going to be reconditioning, polishing up the paint, making it look its absolute best, and we're going to be doing so on the cheap, and I'm gonna be showing you guys some detailer inside secrets on how you can do that to your own car at home. But I'm gonna go over a little bit of the game plan today. In fact, we need to run to the store, get some new equipment, get a tool, um, and uh, that's actually perfect because if you guys wanna follow the step-by-steps I'm going to be doing in this video, you're gonna have to run to the store too and grab some tools. Everything we're going to be using today to get a perfect show paint quality on this truck can be purchased online or at your local Harbor Freight. In fact, the Harbor Freight polisher that I have sitting right over here, I bought maybe six years ago and it's finally starting to become like unusable. You can see like the, the shroud fell off and it's like extra, extra vibrating. So I'm actually gonna be tossing this one after six years of hard work and getting a new one from Harbor Freight um, and we're gonna get some pads. I already have some laying around, but Harbor Freight sells those along with the polishes. I'm gonna be tallying up how much it costs me to polish this car today, just so you guys can get a really good idea of how much it would cost you guys to do this at home. Don't let the sun fool you, it is absolutely freezing outside but because the sun's out it's actually really nice we're gonna jump in my detail van here and head to Harbor Freight while we head to Harbor Freight I do want to address the topic from my last video um, and answer some of your guys' amazing questions about that if you did not see my last video I unveiled this super top secret project that I've been working on for the last like three or four months uh, behind the scenes you guys reached out on Instagram and gave me some amazing support which I thank you so much for that but you gave me some awesome questions that I want to go over right now the most basic question question is what what are you doing and basically in Utah the automotive tint laws require these front two windows to be tinted no darker than 43% and I was sick of getting pulled over for my illegal tint so I'm gonna do something about it I'm trying to change that law to one tier darker at 35%. Another amazing question is if my bill does pass, when does the law go into effect? So if my bill does become a law, that law will go into effect in Utah July 1st of this summer. Another amazing question had to do with my link to my fundraising website. Now, a lot of people have asked, if your bill is already in the Senate and in the House and it's looking good and you've done all the work, why do we need to pay for anything? Like, what does that money go to? Long story short, I had to hire some professional lobbyists uh, and I hired nothing but the best to really push this bill through. And if I did not hire this lobbyist, uh, the bill would have already been shut down. So I give all the credit to them. They do come at a premium cost and I don't want to be the one fronting that for the whole state of Utah. I wish, I wish I had deep enough pockets to do that, but unfortunately I don't have all the money in the world. So I am I'm kind of calling for the Utah car community to come together, chip in a little bit here and there uh, to lessen that financial burden. Another great question was how can I help? Best way you can help is either share my uh, link to my fundraising website, share what I'm doing, share the bill, uh, talk to your friends about it, how you can change the law in your state. Um, and then if you can uh, contribute to my fundraising, uh, whatever you can, just remember a fix it ticket here in Utah for tint is $60. Uh, if you don't strip it, if you strip it and retint it, that's like 200 bucks. Um, so if you can spare 10, 20 bucks, that'd be amazing and I'd be forever grateful. Let's go get a new polisher. Here we are at Harbor Freight and boy did they really step up their polishing game. They have so many different options, whereas a couple years ago they only had one, kind of like this one. This is kind of like the one at the shop. This one is about $80. I think we're gonna go with this one. It's a little bit better, seems like it'll be a little bit more comfy, and this is only $100. So we're going to pick up this one right now. And like I mentioned prior in the video, they do have pads here. These are only seven bucks a piece. You have a compound pad and a polishing pad. I already have mine at my shop, so we're gonna be using those. They have the polishes and compounds here. This is my favorite, the M100 Speed Pro Compound. You can pick that up a little bit cheaper online, but it is 30 bucks here. And then the Ultra Pro Finishing Polish is 40 bucks here. So I just picked up the polisher and I feel like such an idiot. I got my 20% off Harbor Freight coupon sitting right at my shop on the counter I can't believe I forgot it oh gosh I feel so stupid so this polisher was $100 with tax was like 107 but if you had that coupon you'd only be in this thing about 80 85 bucks so remember your 20% off coupon although it cost $100 not 85 we secured the polisher now let's head back up to my shop get the truck cleaned up and underway all right I hope the truck is thawed and ready to go we got our polisher 
We're ready to get this thing looking good. Thanks for joining me on that quick errand, but now it's actually time to get work on the truck. The first, very, very first step we need to do is actually get all the dirt off the truck so that way we can polish the paint directly with no sandy grit in there. And we're actually gonna be washing it with dish soap. This is a budget correction, so we're gonna be using dish soap. It's obviously kind of taboo to use dish soap when washing cars, but I want any waxes, grease, or anything off of the car, and this is gonna do the trick. And everybody has this in their kitchen, so right there, free, soap but make sure you use this only when you're going to be correcting the paint not after you correct it and protect the paint don't use this anymore grab a proper uh, car wash soap like like plus soaps auto shampoo plus soap has been a great sponsor of our channel and also all of the products we use detailing in my professional detailing company come from plus soap so the link is in the description below if you guys want to check out this stuff for when your car is absolutely perfect and protected you want to use really good high quality products to keep it that way Now that the truck is completely clean, we get to go to the fun part, which is polishing. Now this part can intimidate a lot of people, but I promise you it's not as hard as it looks. I'm going to be using one of my favorite pads is the Meguiar's microfiber cutting pad. I buy these on Amazon. They're technically, a, they're about $10 a pad. So keep that in mind if you want to use these. Basically you just slap it on here. You use your compound and you select a fairly small area. I'm gonna work on this section right here right away and then we'll be able to compare this to this so we can see the difference. Okay, so now I'm going to explain my technique, Clayton's technique in compounding a car. You put some compound on a pad, that's a little bit much but we're uh, starting off so I need to prep the pad. We're gonna pick a small little area and go medium pressure, full speed. We'll do overlapping passes left to right and then up and down. We'll probably do that two times and then inspect. Then we just wipe off the remaining compound and you have yourself a polished little teeny section of the car. And with just that little bit of effort, we went from this dull uh, farm scratched finish, you can kind of see the reflection of the light there, to almost a mirror finish. Well, a cream mirror finish. Now we did this section here, we gotta go do the entire rest of the car. So we just finished the compounding stage and boy, that is a big truck. If you have a smaller car or sedan, that's gonna take you no time at all. This took me forever. But some tips and tricks for you guys. Keep your pad level when polishing. If you're a little nervous, maybe go on a slower speed with less pressure. And just watch how it, how it polishes the paint. You'll get to know it pretty easily. Another tip is keeping your pad clean. I have compressed air, I blew out the pad. If you have a vacuum, you can vacuum it out. But just keep your pad clean. We're gonna move on to the second stage of this. We're going to be polishing the whole car, getting all of the compound uh, scratches out and really make it 
pop, then we're gonna quickly rinse it and follow it up with a ceramic spray. So when you're polishing, it's almost the exact same steps as when you're compounding. I personally like to go a little bit less pressure, a little bit slower, make sure that the polish is doing its job. You'll know by the way it pops, you'll, it'll like really, really deepen up. But it's pretty much the same, uh, same steps. So I'm gonna start on this fender right here. Man, I am getting tired. Good thing this project is almost complete. I went ahead and finished the polish. It looks so good. I went ahead and stuck on the new trim. Um, but with the process of polishing a car, you get a lot of dust. If you can see right here, I'll draw a little mountain logo. It's very, very dusty. So I'm gonna pull the truck out and give it a, a quick rinse and uh, we'll pull it back in and finish up the project. We are almost done completely restoring this old farm truck paint to perfection. Now that the car is completely scratch free or almost scratch free, we went ahead and polished the whole thing. We need to protect it. Now you can do that in any way you want. You can use traditional carnauba wax. You can use like paint sealants. I'm going to vote for Ceramic spray. Ceramic spray is a huge new product uh, in the last couple years. I'm gonna use Plus Soaps brand. Like I mentioned earlier, they make great stuff. I use them every single day. If you do wanna try out their products, the link is in the description below. This stuff is so easy to use. You basically just grab a brand new microfiber towel, you spritz it on the panel, and you just wipe it off. It's just that easy. And I'll show you right here like how hydrophobic this is. You see the water beat up right there? That's crazy. So I'm gonna quickly go over the entire car to protect what we've just done. And then once I'm done, I'm gonna tally up how much this whole thing costs to do. So if you're wanting to do it at home, you know how much to budget for. The new ceramic sprays go so fast. I think that whole thing ugh, took me about five minutes. Let's pull the truck out into the daylight outside and see how we did. I think, I think we did really, really good. I think this paint turned out so good. It is a little bit overcast. You can see with the slight reflection how good this 26 year old paint turned out. You can see it all the way down the side, looking so fresh with the brand new trim. Obviously there's a couple little dings like this. You can't really do anything about that without repainting the car, but I am stoked. So let's go ahead and tally up all the tools and equipment we used to get the paint looking so, so good. So right at the very beginning, we had the DA polisher from Harbor Freight that was $100. Unless you're not dumb like me and bring your 20% off coupon, then it's 80. We'll just say it's 100 bucks. Um, I did find my polish and uh, compound on Amazon in a smaller bottle if you're only gonna use it one or two times. And that ta totals out to be about $15 uh, for the compound and about $13 for the polish. Then the microfiber cutting pads that I picked up, that is $22 for two, so $11 each. Um, and then the ceramic spray is $40 a bottle. That's good enough to do like four or five cars if you use it sparingly, plus some random microfiber towels. Let me tally that up real quick. Without the ceramic spray and without the coupon, we are $150. If you brought your coupon, we'd be at 130, plus 40 bucks for the ceramic spray. We are at a 190 without the coupon. With the coupon, we'd be $170. So 170 bucks and your car is ceramic coated and looking absolutely perfect, a mirror finish. You can't beat that. Uh, I think total on this, it took took me about eight hours and that included going to Harbor Freight, coming back, washing it, and polishing it. Now, although this took me eight hours to complete, I know you guys may vary on time, but I am super confident you guys can get it done. If you are a little nervous, there are so many videos on YouTube explaining the in-depth process of polishing a paint, but trust me, it's not very hard. But thank you guys so much for tuning in to another video. 
definitely check out the link in the description below if you want to help change the Utah tint laws in Utah like I mentioned at the beginning of the video everything helps whether you share it or um, donate a little bit but thank you so much for watching yet another one of our videos until the next one peace